Awesome. Well, um, if y'all don't know me, I'm Jonna Vanover. So I'm um, vice provost of marketing, enrollment, and student services at Southern Nazarene University. And um, I've worked in adult Christian higher ed for almost 10 years now and worked for a few different schools, um, Mount Vernon being one, Ohio Christian University, Trebek and Nazarene University, and now Southern Nazarene University. So I've um, been at SNU for almost a year. Um, my one year anniversary is coming up here in July. And so that's super exciting and awesome. And today we are going to be sharing with you a presentation about um, getting started with inbound marketing. And so I'm going to share my screen here of these slides. Let me move this out of the way. Okay. Oops, sorry. Hit the wrong button. Present. Um, and I have Carrie Hopkins here with me. So Carrie is a dear friend of mine. I've known her um, since January of 2015. She's literally one of the best marketing um, people in the business. Definitely the best of that I've ever worked with. Amazing. And she's got some awesome um, just news and different things to share with us today. So, um, Carrie, I will let you take it away. All right. Good afternoon. Thank you so much, Jonna. That's going to be uh, difficult to live up to. So we're going to try. Um, so, yeah, we're just going to chat about getting started with inbound marketing um, and you can go ahead and do the next slide, Jonna. Uh, just a little bit about myself and kind of my experience to give you an idea before we get started. I'm actually based in Nashville, and so I do also work 100% remotely for SNU. Um, I am a mom to an almost two-year-old and a wife and a dog mom as well. And I have been in marketing for 12 years, and most of which has really been in the education field. Um, I did spend a few years with a French boarding school and then really moved into higher education. And prior to SNU, I, I did take a little hiatus from high, higher ed and I spent about 18 months with an inbound marketing agency. And so it was there that I was really able to cut my teeth on inbound. And I also worked with clients across many different industries. And so I was immersed in completely new marketing practices. Uh, certainly new, they weren't new, but they were new to me. And so I spent a lot of time in the SaaS industry and the majority of my clients were in that business to business space, which again was totally new to me. Um, and so what I loved is that when I returned to higher ed, I I was able to bring all of that knowledge over and implement a lot of those new ideas into SNU's overall marketing strategy. And one of those was inbound marketing. So I'm excited to kind of share with you kind of what we've learned as well. So now, next slide. Okay, so today we're just going to um, really scratch the surface on inbound marketing. And we'll talk about what it is and really understanding the basics and the basic foundation that's needed to implement an inbound marketing strategy. Um, but I also wanted to provide some tangible examples and even resources for, for you if you want to take them back to your team uh, as you get started with inbound. And um, at the end, I did provide a slide with resources. And so it has links to different templates that you can use helpful um, blog articles, certifications that you can take, and then also um, templates to help you start content planning. So, um, and I'll pause at the end of each of these sections and go over any questions that there may be. So like Jonna said, if you do come up with a question, just throw it in the chat and then we'll address them um, throughout the presentation. So we can dig in. All right, so what is inbound marketing? In, in the very simplest form, inbound marketing is the methodology that attracts a potential customer or student to your website using valuable and relevant content. So for example, if you've Googled a question um, in the last week, which I'm sure we all have, and you end up on a blog that you find your answers to that questions, that's inbound marketing. 
So you had a question and then someone provided you with valuable content that was tailored to that question that you asked. So it's obviously more complex than that, um, but that's just an example to give you an idea. So when we think about the difference between outbound and inbound marketing, Outbound marketing is something that interrupts our audience and it shows them content that they may not want at that moment or honestly they might not want at any moment. And so instead inbound forms, it's a way to form a two way conversation with our prospective students and even better, the prospective students are, are the ones that are starting the conversation. And so on the right, you see HubSpot's flywheel. And if you've never heard of HubSpot, um, HubSpot is a, essentially it's an all-inclusive software and it can serve pretty much any uh, side of your business. It can serve sales, it can be a marketing S a CRM, and it's also uh, a CMS, so you can build websites on it as well. Um, but two years ago, HubSpot went from the typical funnel that we all know and love, and they transitioned into what they call the flywheel. And so essentially, the flywheel is something that puts our prospective students at the center of everything we do with marketing. And so the first stage is we're going to attract customers or students. The second stage is we're going to engage them and, and work to convert them. And then once they're our students, we're going to do what we can and give them content to delight them. And so when you think about these different stages, content should also be very different in each of these stages. Okay, next slide, please. Okay, why inbound marketing for higher education? So our recruitment teams may work a lead or an application for a really brief period of time. And so that can potentially lead us to believe that we have really fast sales cycles, but we know that our prospective students are researching us and our programs long before they even reach out to us. And some may not even engage with the recruiter at all before they say, okay, this is the school for me, this is the program for me, I'm gonna go ahead and apply. And so inbound can help attract prospective students to our websites using timely and relevant content. And the content is gonna help us position ourselves as thought leaders and really trusted partners for those prospective students. And once once they are on our site, your marketing team can do what they do the very best and convert those website visitors into MQLs or marketing qualified leads, and then hopefully to SQLs, um, sales qualified leads. And the best part to me is that the majority of this can be done completely automated, and then that's obviously going to lead to a lot more efficiencies for your team. All right, next slide. Okay, benefits of inbound marketing. Why even do this? Is it worth it? So ultimately, benefits, um, it's going to increase the organic traffic to your site. And so this, of course, is going to be earned traffic. You are not paying for this traffic. Um, you're going to generate uh, marketing qualified leads. And then, as I said before, you can automate nurturing campaigns to convert those marketing qualified leads into leads that are ready for your sales team to talk to, your recruiters to speak with. So inbound allows us to, to really engage with in that two-way conversation with our students. And ultimately, we're going to be able to be a resource to them and not an interruption. And the very best part to me is that this is 100% trackable. So I don't like to spend a dollar without knowing exactly what I'm getting for it or you know, I, I want to be able to track everything. And you can absolutely do that with inbound marketing. So like I said before, you're not spending money. This is all earned media. And of course, I want to mention that inbound is a really good way to engage with our academic community. So for example, you may need to interview a program director or a faculty member to serve as a subject matter expert for a particular blog or an ebook. Um, you'll definitely engage with the enrollment counselors in this process because they're the ones that are on the front lines. They're speaking to our prospective students on, on a daily basis. So you want to have that communication open as well. And then alumni love to see just content going out on a regular basis you know, on the social channels. So we've gotten a lot of really good comments from SNU alumni. Just love to see 
um, you know, that we're just putting out so much um, useful content to people. So those are, of course, just added bonuses. Um, I always love to find ways to engage with our academic community, and this is a really good way to do so. Okay, so that is a kind of the first section. Are there any questions um, just of what is inbound in general? Any questions in the chat? I don't have. No, there are not any questions in the chat as of right now on that first section. Okay, awesome. Okay, so the first, um, okay, let's see about marketing, here we go. So there's, like I said in the beginning, there's two really fundamental asset uh, aspects of inbound that we wanna understand before you get started. And the first is buyer personas. So we obviously want to fully understand who our prospective students are before we can begin to create really juicy content for them. And so buyer personas is how we do that. And they are semi-fictional characters that are actually based on your real students and their experience in the buying process and the process of deciding to go back to school and ultimately picking your institution. So next slide, please. I think it's um, I think it's really common for us to assume that we know who our prospective students are and the motivations for returning to school, but the you know the motivations of a single parent who may be stuck at a job they really hate that's obviously going to look very different from in a mid to upper level manager who's ready to get into the C suite. And so we need to speak to these groups differently. And you know the content that we provide for them will look very different. So, you know, personas are not easy. They're not going to take. They're going to take some time, um, a decent amount of time. But it will completely change the way that you create content moving forward. And so, um, it's a really important first step to take. Okay, so how do you do it? What are the first steps? You'll probably already have a general idea of who your personas are at a very surface level. Um, you'll probably already know kind of what your student body looks like and kind of the groups that are similar. And so I recommend starting to just kind of, uh, kind of outline who those may be and then recommend interviewing five to 10 people per group. So for example, if you want to dig into a particular program, or if you say, let's pull our online students or our veteran students, I'd at least interview five. And also you, you want to interview people who have started within the last six months. And so this whole thing is to understand their experience in the buying process. And so you want that memory to be really fresh. So I recommend six months at most. Ideally, someone's, you know, students who have just started would be even better. So you first identify who you want to interview, and then you're gonna create your list of questions for that interview. Um, and on the resource tab, I've linked some, um, linked out for you, and there's a lot on the internet, so you can find persona interview questions everywhere, but I did link one for you. So basically, what are these questions going to cover? You're gonna be asking questions about um, demographics, their career information, their motivations, um, their pain points. So, and now these pain points aren't going to be about your institution. They're going to be about the student. So they have family obligations. They have a church life. They have a full-time job. You know, they may be worried about time management. Um, you'll dig into the objections and that is specifically about your program or your school. Um, and then as well as a really big one, we want to understand what their goals are once they're, once they're done with the program. And so having all of this information is really going to begin to shape your personas. So the interview itself, what can that look like? Um, I would record your calls. Um, I use Zoom and I don't do cameras. I just do the call. Um, this is something that really allows you to focus on the conversation and not be feverishly taking notes. And so I always recommend to record it. Um, and then always ask for permission first before recording it. But once that recording's done, there's, there's um, services that you can, rev.com is what I use. 
And essentially you send them the video and they'll email you a transcript of the call within 24 hours. It's super affordable. Uh, I think they just up their prices, but I think it's like $1.25 per minute of video. So very affordable and worth um, the couple of dollars that you'll, that you'll use. So be respectful of their time. These calls should really last no more than 15 minutes. And you're gonna let them do the talking. And so you're gonna get a lot of really good nuggets out of these conversations. And again, that's why recording them and getting the transcripts is really helpful because if they say a really good quote about your university, you don't wanna say, oh, can you repeat that? Or what did you say about this? Um, that way you could go back in the transcripts and, and get those awesome quotes. So just an example of kind of the results that you may see, these are some examples um, that came out of our persona interviews that we did last summer. And so you're able to see, kind of understand, this one said, I have a lot of experience, but I don't have a piece of paper to back it up. Well, they're going, that is their motivation. They need the piece of paper to potentially get a new job, to get a promotion. Um, as a VP, I don't do the day-to-day -day work. So there's definitely some concerns about actually going back to school and writing papers. So that's a pain point for this person. They're, they're nervous to get back into school in general and write papers. So you, you know, we may create content around that to say like, you know, five tips to acing your first college essay or anything that kind of can go around that particular pain point. Uh, one of my biggest concerns about going back to school was dealing with the VA. Um, if you've seen SNU's blog, we have a lot of resources for veterans and going back to school and kind of what that process can look like. Uh, we just want to be, we, we want to be their resource so that that isn't stressful and that it's not, it's no longer a concern. Alrighty, so after the interviews, after your interviews have concluded, you'll, you're going to have a decent direction of where you want to go. So you're gonna identify kind of the buckets of people and the personas will naturally fall into groups of similar themes. So certainly as you do the interviews and read the transcripts, you're, that'll just ne very naturally happen. So you want to give your personas a name and I'd recommend choosing something that your team, the marketing team can easily identify and reference when you're doing your content planning. So. For example, um, motivated Matt. That person's probably wanting to climb that corporate ladder. Um, stifled Steve. That person may be kind of stuck in a cubicle, uh, really stuck in the job that they hate. You know, uh, working mom Mary. She may be needing that to finish that degree to to take that next step. And sorry, those were not great examples. Those were off the cuff. So my bad. <laughs> Um, but you want to, once you have these names, I would create a slide deck or even just like a one sheet that, it, that outlines each persona and so that's easily accessible and shared. And share this with your sales team. Make sure that they know who the personas are because like we said, they're on the front lines. They're talking to these people every single day. And this information can be super valuable for them to have as they're recruiting students for your university. So once you've all done all that, we're going to get ready and we're going to start making persona-driven content. Alrighty, any questions so far? I do not see any in the chat. If anyone has any, you can go ahead and throw them in there, but nothing in there right now. Okay. Yeah, are easy. Well, well, we'll we'll have time at the That's end. The way, to um, I liked your names that you made up on the fly, oh, thank you. so I I thought they were great. <laughs> uh, okay, so the next piece of the foundation. So the first is the buyer personas, and the next piece of that foundation is understanding the buyer's journey. So this is essentially the process that we all go through that's leading up to a purchase, and that process really looks no different for someone looking to find um, the next program that they're going to do at your institution. So we'll quickly go through each of these stages of the buyer's journey. And there are three stages um, that we all go through before ultimately making that decision to buy. So the first stage is the awareness stage. Johnny, you can go to the next slide, please. Okay, so during the awareness stage, the person is experiencing the uh, symptoms of a problem. So for our students, that may be something like, they may be sitting at work thinking, 
I do not make enough money to provide for my family the way that I want to. Maybe they can't pay their bills easily or they can't go on the vacation that they want to. So they're experiencing the symptoms to their problem. The symptom is I just feel like I don't make enough money and it doesn't make me feel good. The second stage is a consideration stage. So during the consideration stage, the person has, they've given a name to their problem and now they're gonna begin researching how to solve it. For our students, that may be, I need a career change. So the symptom was feeling uneasy about providing for your family. And in order to no longer feel this way, they need a career change. So they've given a name to that problem. And lastly, the decision stage. The person has decided a solution to their problem and then now they're gonna choose a vendor or they're gonna choose a school or a program. So in order to change my career, I need a master's degree. So the symptom was, I can't provide for my family. The problem or the opportunity was, okay, I need a career change. And then the solution, in order to change my career so that I can provide for my family in the way that I want to, I need a master's degree. So really understanding the process, what our students are going through while picking our institution or our MBA program, it's really important because we're gonna create content that's specific to each of these different stages because their thought process and where their mind is is very different in each of these stages. And as we've said, Inbound is all about timely and relevant content. So that's a quick overview of what the buyer's journey is. And we can, um, I, I wanted to get into some practical things that you guys can start with. And so blogging um, is one of those things. You can go to the next slide, Jonna. So blogging is going to be the primary tool that's going to attract people to your website. And so remember, attracting is the very first stage of inbound marketing. And your blog is going to answer questions that your prospective students are going to have. And ultimately, this is going to increase traffic to your site. And then the marketing team can do what they do best and work to convert those um, leads. Next slide. So there's a few things that you think about as you either begin a blog and start it fresh, or if you have a current one, there's things that you can do to optimize it. And first and foremost, this is the most important in my opinion, is to do your keyword research. So having a blog on your website is awesome, but they're really just gonna be words on a page unless you're optimizing it. So don't just blog to blog. You, we've gotta let your blog work for you, work for your institution and work for your sales team. So there's tools that you can do to research keywords, um, SEM Rush or Moz, and I've linked to those in the resource slide as well. Because keeping in mind that all inbound content is going to revolve around the topic clusters and the keywords that you're choosing to target. So understanding keyword research is really important um, first step. So, and then linking strategy. As you begin to build kind of your inbound ecosystem, it's going to be important to have a linking strategy. And so that's going to be, you know, including internal links in your blogs and also external links. And then down the road, once you kind of get the hang of it, you'll want to just create a backlinking strategy. And honestly, that's kind of a big project and um, it takes a while, but that's essentially finding quality sites that can link back to your site. And that's, all, that's really gonna bolster your website's value. And then there's gonna be the usual suspects that you're probably already familiar with if you've worked on a website like the meta description and um, using headlines and optimizing them, adding alt text to your images and things like that. So that's kind of similar to, to a typical website. And then lastly, set up a way for people to subscribe to your blog. Uh, you can do this by adding a checkbox to all your inquiry forms. You can add CTAs in your emails. Um, and you know, remember if you're adding CTAs in your emails or your forms, do what you can to automate the process. If you can set up a workflow that subscribes them right away, that way it's just one click and that person's not having to go and fill out another form to subscribe to your blog. Um, okay, so after all of that thinking, you know, what do results of blogging, does it work? What does that even look like? 
So the next slide will show you. So this graph here shows the organic traffic to SNU's blog. So we implemented inbound marketing at SNU in September of last year. And if you'll see, we didn't start picking up organic traffic right away because inbound marketing takes time. Um, it's kind of a snowball and really you're playing the long game. And, but you know, as you can see, it grows over time. And again, this is only traffic, to, organic traffic to the blog, not just our website in general. Alrighty, any questions about blogging? Or I think I skipped the buyer's journey. Any questions about that? There are not any in the chat. Either you're doing a great job at explaining everything or they're sleeping. I'm not sure. Or they're eating lunch. It's lunchtime. Okay. Yeah, that's true. This is true. <laughs> okay, awesome. <clears throat> So lastly, I wanted to give you guys some resources for content planning. We've talked a lot, I've given you guys some ideas, but ultimately, you know, content planning is really where you kind of dig in. So you have the fundamentals of inbound marketing. And as I mentioned before, the ultimate goal is to create content for each persona and each stage of the buyer's journey. Granted, that is a ton of content. So we're gonna start small. And I recommend starting in the awareness stage of the buyer's journey because you probably, whether you know it or not, you probably already have content that can be used for the consideration and decision stages. So for example, if you have like one sheeters for each of your programs or any case studies, or if you have like a comparison sheet on, you know, what is a, a master's of leadership compared to an MBA, things like that can totally be used for inbound content in those two stages. Um, so you, you probably do have some already. So the awareness stage is a little bit trickier um, and typically you're gonna have the most content in your awareness stage. So I wanted, and as you can see, like the different examples here, the different bullet points, those are pieces of content that typically belong in that particular stage of the buyer's journey. And so uh, on the last slide, I just wanted to give you an example of how I do content planning. And so I uh, created an Excel document and every tab is going to be persona based. And so each tab is gonna have a section, you'll have your awareness stage, your consideration, and then your decision stage. So just get with your team and start brainstorming ideas for each stage. And you'll, like I said, you'll most likely have a lot more in the awareness stage and that's totally okay. And so you're gonna have a title. And again, your titles are going to be based on the, your keywords. The content type, is it gonna be a blog, a checklist, a one sheet? And then the pain point that it's trying to serve a purpose to. Always make sure you know what that is. And then what persona, which, uh, which persona that you're, you're targeting. And again, you can either do this or you can have a tab for each persona. That's probably a little bit easier actually. And um, I also have um, included a different type of template as well for this. So it's just a way to get kind of all your thoughts on a page. And then once you have a decent list, start prioritizing of either A, what can we get done first or easiest, or what do we think is the most important or can cover the most ground? And I'll say a lot of your content, it's, it may touch all of your um, personas. It doesn't necessarily have to be specific to one um, when you get started. For example, we did an ebook early on and it was, it was good for, for all of our personas. And so sometimes that's a good way to start out to, to just create something that, that is um, kind of universal. So, um, and again, I did add some more um, templates on the resource slide for you as well. And then um, next slide, Jonna, I just want to explain these. Okay, so um, what is inbound marketing? It's just an awesome kind of blog from HubSpot that will just kind of reiterate and probably much more eloquently than I have just done. Um, persona interview questions, I just linked to one. Like I said, there's tons out there that you can find. And of course, you're going to tweak those based on a student. So you're not going to say, you're not going to call them a customer or you're not going to you know, you're gonna say a program or our school, so those will be tweaked a little bit. 
Um, again, a blog on just what is the buyer's journey that will go into more depth than I did. Uh, and also content ideas for every stage in the buyer's journey, because like I said, those pieces are, are very different. So that, that blog gives you a little more information about that. Um, the two keyword research tools that I mentioned, SEM Rush and Moz, and those can really help you and they're pretty, um, they're pretty easy user friendly. And then you can use my little Excel document or a content mapping template. Um, I believe that probably links to HubSpot. They have one of their own. Uh, the transcript service I mentioned, you just send them your videos and they'll send you back your transcripts within um, 24 hours. And then also HubSpot has a ton of certifications. And so you watch videos and you can learn all about inbound. You can learn about pretty much anything in marketing and then take an exam and get certified. And so even if you don't wanna take the exam, their certifications are awesome. They have a tons of stuff on, um, it's called HubSpot Academy. So highly recommend it if you just wanna dig in more and just learn more about inbound in general um, or pretty much anything in marketing. So if there aren't any questions or if you think of them later, feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn or do so anyways, I'd love to connect. Um, but I'm happy to answer any questions um, now or, or in the future. Awesome. Thank you, Carrie. Um, yeah, feel free y'all to use the chat. We've got some good feedback here. This is great. Thanks for sharing. Great info. Um, like Carrie said, this really uh, was a conversation or just things to help you get started. Um, and so kind of once you get the ball rolling, I think it, like anything, that's when typically um, you might start to think of your questions once you're actually doing the exercise, you know. So um, definitely feel free to connect with Carrie. She's awesome sauce, like I've already told you. And um, I'm just going to lead a little conversation here at the end, y'all, to talk about um, Kahia and just um, possible uh, other webinars we can do in the future and things of that nature. So if you can hang on for just a few more minutes, that's what we're going to go over now. So, um, okay. So are you a member of the marketing and recruiting learning community? So um, I found out not too long ago that I lead this community, which is awesome. I didn't know that I led it, but I do. And so um, I'm really excited about that. And, um, if you are not, I have a spreadsheet of some folks that are members of this community with Kahia. I want to say it was like eight to 10 names. So if you're like unsure if, if you're on it, you're probably not. So what I wanted to say was if you would like to be connected to this learning community, if you could list, um, your name, first and last, your email title, and then the university that you work for. Um, I will copy and paste your information when we're done into a spreadsheet so that um, I can communicate with you frequently on like if we're going to do any webinars, have any meetings or whatever. And so this is going to be a space for Kahia members in the marketing and recruiting areas to um, connect. And like if you have any questions or you're experiencing something and you want to like email other members like, hey, are you guys experiencing this? Or, um, you know, I'm trying to think through this. Does anybody have any feedback or helpful input or whatever. Um, that's what we're going to try to um, facilitate and orchestrate here. So, um, oh, awesome, Renee. You're great. Sign up for the learning community at that link. So feel free to go ahead and use that link. That would be fabulous. I just want to make sure we didn't really have that many people on the list. And there was a lot of people that were on this webinar. So, oh, wrong link. She's going to give us the right one. Okay, cool. Um, okay, so the conference. It did get um, delayed and pushed back to October. So it's the 19th to the 22nd. Grapevine, Texas. I just want to make sure that everybody had that information and that um, if you were thinking of attending, you know, you had the link and, and all the things and knew that the date was changed. Awesome. Thank you, Renee. <clears throat> okay. So the sessions that as of right now are um, already signed up to be offered in 2020. Now there's, I believe, three openings. So these were the three sessions and then there were like three other possible openings. Um, and so the ones that are already um, in the works currently are, do you know the difference between marketing and advertising? Digital Marketing 101, five steps to create a winning digital marketing strategy. And then also where, how, and when to reach and engage the growing adult and non-traditional student population. 
So um, those are three that are, again, already in process, but there, it did appear to me there were a few that were still like open. And so what I wanted to do was talk about if anyone had any ideas um, or things that like, if you know, you're going to go to this, what is something you really want to be there? What is something you really want to learn about? Um, something that would be super helpful for you to learn at this conference. So obviously, you know, these three, um, what are missing topics or suggested improvements that um, we could do for the marketing and recruiting track? Anybody have any ideas? If you do throw them in the chat. Something I was seeing, I'm gonna pop back over and just look at those again. Something I was thinking as I was typing these out and looking over this was maybe um, possibly something that went over like customer service or um, sales tips for like your enrollment counselors and team. So that was one thing I thought of. Another thing that I thought of was um, maybe someone leading a conversation on remote teams, supervising remote teams. So this would be more for if you are a leader, but leading remote teams. Um, that's something I, I do um, and have done for quite some time now, but I know especially with this recent um, COVID-19 and everything that we had happen, a lot of people had to transition quickly to a remote team. And so um, I think that would be kind of a cool one as well. Anybody have any other ideas? Communication flow strategy, prospect engagement. Yeah, that's really good. Comp flow is so important. Thank you, Katie. Sales and marketing alignment, huge. I agree. Those are both really, really good ones. Um... I know, I think another thing that um, schools can work on or that we've struggled with, and, and this has been a thing at all of the schools I've worked at really, is the transition between um, enrollment counselors and advising. I don't know if y'all have experienced that, but when you have that handoff or when it goes from, you know, um, throughout the funnel when you have sales piece and then you're going to the, the advising piece, which at each school it's kind of been different too. Some people do that transition when people start classes, here actually at SNU, we do that. Um, the advisors work with our students in the enrollment process. So they actually talk to the students um, once their transcript evaluation is done. So um, that's always a interesting piece too, is the advising team and the enrollment counselor team working together. Working with a traditional campus oriented marketing department. Ooh, Lisa, that's good. Yeah, that's really good. I think a lot of people um, have that situation or set up. Um, I know from my past experience, it can be really hard when on the adult side, you need something and they say, oh, well, sorry, we can't do that because we're working on stuff for graduation or um, whatever. And you're thinking, okay, well, we never stop over here. <laughs> we have stuff every month of the year. So um, yeah, that's really good. Great ideas. Anything else y'all can think of? What else do I have here? Oh, um, if we would do another uh, webinar like this, obviously any of these subjects could be items we did too. So there's been a lot of great ones. So um, if we can't have all of them at Cahia, then um, obviously we could do another webinar like this. So I just wanted to see, um, would you guys be interested in another webinar like this? Um, maybe if we did them um, quarterly or something or what would your guys' interest level be to have different things like this? I know not all of us can um, can make it to, to the actual conference as well. And I think these are helpful, especially as random things come up, um, like none of us knew COVID was going to happen. And so that changed the game for a lot of us. Great. Awesome. Yes. Lisa says, awesome. Deb. Hey, Deb. How you doing, girlfriend? <laughs> Awesome. Yay. Okay. It seems like we have a lot of interest for that too. Okay, cool. Um, great. Well, then maybe we can figure out uh, another fall webinar. Um, and I think, does this time work for everybody? 
I know for me, I'm in Eastern time, so it's a little bit after lunch for me, but it is for Central folks, it was lunchtime. I think like this timing of day seems to probably be pretty good for people too. Um, of course, it is being recorded, so people, anybody can watch the recording back, but um, it's also, I think, always good to be live and you can ask your questions. So we'll try to do that. I think that was my last slide, yeah. Okay, awesome, guys. Well, um, thank you, everyone, for attending. Um, I'll go webinar is a great idea. Awesome, thank you, Tamara. Um, thanks, everybody, for taking time out of your day and attending. Um, Carrie, thank you so much. Last minute, I asked her, like, literally not even a week ago if she would do this for us. <laughs> and so thank you, Carrie, for um, getting that together and doing this for us. Um, we can share the um, PowerPoint, yes. I'll make sure that Renee gets it. And then, um, Renee, what do you do? Do you post it on the website, perhaps? Or I would guess she does. I think that's where it's going to go. So we'll make sure. If y'all, if you don't get it, um, here I'll put my thing in the chat. Email me. Um, if y'all need anything, feel free to ask us any questions. Again, I'm happy to to connect. Feel free to keep my email, and if you have any questions for me or Carrie, 